Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about uh, the balance of payments in, ch in chapters 34 of your book, and the pages are listed on the screen. And what we're going to be looking at is trying to understand what is meant by this concept of balance of payments, and we're going to um, more specifically look at the difference between what's called the current account and the financial account. We'll talk about what those are and how they're different. And finally, we'll look at why capital flows from one country to another. What are some of the determinants that, that cause that um, shifting of capital resources? So let's go ahead and take a look at the two different accounts, what are known as the current account and the financial account, which make up the balance of payments. The first one is the current account, and the current account looks at um, the net imports for a, a country. So we're looking at the purchase of goods and services um, made by people in one country and purchasing goods from another country and vice versa, people from other countries purchasing goods and services from yours. Um, a surplus exists when your exports are greater than your imports. When you're sending the, the value of the goods that you're sending out to other countries is greater than the value of the goods you're bringing in from others. And you have a deficit when the opposite is true. Again, this is all the purchase of, of um, goods and services. And this is what we usually refer to when we talk about the trade imbalance. When a country has a trade surplus, they have more exports than imports. And if they have a trade deficit, then they have more or imports than exports. And currently, the United States has a trade deficit. The other account is known as the financial or capital account. And that's looking at the flow of financial assets between countries. So um, that's looking at investments and things like that, and whether money is coming into a country or exiting a country. If money is coming into the country, if more money is coming in than is leaving, it's called an inflow. And it's an outflow when more money is leaving the country than stays in. These two accounts, the capital account and the financial account, make up what is known as the balance of payments. And they are the inverse of each other. So the balance of payments is always equal to the current account plus the financial account. We could rewrite that to say that the current account is equal to um, the negative financial account. Because if you have a trade surplus, you're going to have net capital outflow. And if you have a trade deficit, a negative number for the capital account, you're going to have capital inflow, which would be a positive number. And the reason why is because um, the uses of cash have to equal the sources of cash. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, if uh, from the United States perspective, we have a trade deficit. We bring more products into the United States than we send out of the United States. So, for example, we import lots of goods from Japan. So when the Japanese bring goods into the United States, they sell the goods and they, the Japanese um, producer receives dollars in exchange for the goods that he's selling in the United States. Because in order to sell a good in a country, you have to use their currency. So from a current account perspective, when the Japanese sell their products in the United States, that's a deficit from the U.S. perspective. But now the Japanese company has all these dollars they receive from selling their goods in the United States, and they have to do something with those dollars. And so they can either buy goods um, from the U.S., which would then create essentially an export for the U.S., which would begin to balance out the current account, or they can take those dollars and invest them in financial assets within the United States. So essentially now more money is coming into the U.S. financial system than there was before, so that's a capital inflow. So the source of cash, the sale of Japanese goods in the United States, had to equal its use of cash, which is Japanese investment in U.S. assets. So the capital and financial accounts always have to balance. Now when it comes to capital flows, what causes capital to go from one country to another? Why would one country want to invest in a, a different country? Um, we can use the loanable funds market and the loanable funds model to try and help us understand why um, assets, financial assets in one country, tend to leave that country and, and get reinvested somewhere else. Um, in order to look at this, we're going to make a couple of assumptions. One is that all capital flows are in the form of loans because we're using the loanable funds market. And the other is that we're going to pretend that exchange rates have no effect. So this is sort of an oversimplified model, but it helps explain the general concept pretty well. So let's look at two countries. Look at the U.S. and Japan. Generally what will happen is that savings and financial assets will flow into the country with the greater return. In this case, it's the greater um, interest rate. So the suppliers of loanable funds are those people who are looking to give out loans to other people. 
And so we see in this example, the U.S. rate of return is lower than that of Japan. The interest rate for the U.S. market is much lower than it is in Japan. So that would mean then that U.S. investors would um, be more attracted to giving loans in Japan because they would get a greater rate of return, a greater rate of interest. So what would happen is there would be less money available for people in the U.S. to receive loans. So there would be a left shift in the supply of loanable funds in the United States, which would cause the interest rates to rise. At the same time, that money would then be shifted into the Japanese loanable funds market, which would increase the amount of funds available for loans in Japan, which would cause a right shift in its supply, causing a decrease in the interest rate until both countries uh, equalize. And when the rate of return is the same in both countries, then the, the outflow of capital from the U.S. into Japan would stop. And so basically, um, individuals and firms are looking to make loans where they have the greatest rate of return. And as a result, in an open economy, we generally see um, the interest rates begin to equalize across all countries. We'll look at some more information in class. We'll do some examples of uh, balance of payments, and there's some problems that's to work on as well, and I'll see you then.